Hey guys, I'm David Mitchell, founder and CEO of Tradeway. What if God himself gave you a blueprint for how to handle your money? Well, the Bible is a practical book. Let's dive in and see what it has to say about wealth, about risk, about leverage, and about investing, and uncover how trading in the stock market can be a powerful tool for moving towards your biggest goals. We're so happy you're here. This is The Word on Investing. Hey guys, welcome to the podcast. Well, you guys know that we spend a lot of time talking about trading in the U.S. stock and options markets and using that to create your own family business so you can pass the skill sets down to your kids, grandkids, and so forth. And if you go back several of our previous episodes, we talk specifically about the advantages of options trading. Well, today we're going to blow you away with this show because I've got a very special guest on with me. And I actually count him as the top options trading expert in America, which actually makes him the top options trading expert in the world, Mr. Tom Sosnoff. Welcome to the show, Tom. Thanks so much for having me. This is awesome. You bet. This is, this is going to be a treat, not only for me, but certainly for all of our listeners. Well, right out of college, you work with Drexel Burnham Lambert. You know, that's got to be pretty interesting to get in there with the big boys on Wall Street, learn all the good tricks you can learn from those guys. And then in the early 80s, you became a lead market maker with the Chicago Board of Options. Now, the thing that caught my eye early on, you began to get the idea that because of the Internet and Internet brokerage accounts, people could get all of a sudden that options trading would become really popular with the average retail investor but they just didn't have the tools to do it. And you were one of the first people to recognize that. You began building these tools. So, you know, how did you see all this coming when you did? Because you really, you're really one of the founding fathers of options trading for the retail investor. Okay. When I got out of college, it was the end of 1979 and it was the middle of a recession and interest rates were 20%. There was no jobs for, first of all, they didn't even have finance majors when I was in school. It was basically... I was a political science major and I went to school in upstate New York and, and they didn't really, um, I thought I was going to work in international government and politics and that's why I, kind of what I was studying. My first interview was with Drexel and they offered me a job so I took it because I was worried I was never going to get another job offer. <laughs> that, those were the times. Yes, I remember them. So so I, I, I kind of looked around and my, my parents said, um, my, my dad was a civil rights attorney and my mom was an art teacher. And I, I looked at him and I said, hey, guess what? I'm in finance. <laughs> yeah, on Wall Street. I'm sure they loved it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. No, wow. my, dad was, my dad was definitely not a hardcore capitalist, but, um, but they were like, hey, you're off the payroll. That's all we care. Yeah, right. That was a good timing. And so um, I was in the Drexel training program and I, was, I, was, I really enjoyed it. And I was learning a ton and I loved it. And I was learning about options. And I met a couple of guys there that were older than me that had, you know, that had um, family, wives and families and young kids. And they really wanted to trade. They didn't want to be part of a big brokerage firm. They wanted to, to trade like a, back then there wasn't really hedge funds, but they wanted to create like a fund, a prop fund. So they said, they, they, they called me aside one day and I was only 23 years old. And they said, if you move to Chicago and go on trade on the floor of the SIBO, we'll put up the money for you. And so I'm like, you know, sounds like an offer I can't refuse. You're 23 years old. You got to take your shot. I had no reason not to do it. I mean, I had a good job. That was it. But I was still too young not to take the shot. And so I um, packed up my car, moved to Chicago, came to the floor of the SIBO. It was 1980, 1981. And I, um, I, I stayed down there for 20 years and traded. I was one of the survivors and traded, you know, the S&P 100 pit for almost, you know, 17 or 18 of those 19 years. In 1999, was the dot-com boom. And I kind of saw the writing on the wall. I was like, you know, we're still making money and good money, but it's not going to be here in a couple of years. This place is going to be a bowling alley, a ghost town, a swimming pool. I don't know what it's going to be, but it's not, there's not going to be 2000 guys down here screaming and yelling in a couple of years. Right. So I, um, I had the idea to build Thinkorswim. Wasn't exactly sure what Thinkorswim was going to be, but I liked the name, had the idea. We had saved up enough money Myself and my partner, Scott Sheridan, we had saved up enough money. We, were, we had a trading prop trading firm at the time. And I said to Scott, I go, you, you keep trading on the floor and try to, you know, try to cover our expenses. And I'm going to go build this crazy company called Thinkorswim. And we had saved up enough money. We raised a little money. And um, 
uh, we rolled the dice, took everything we had and built Thinkorswim. And it turned out to be an amazing technologically advanced platform for 1999. And we thought that there'd be interest, retail interest in trading options. We just weren't hundred percent sure. Right. It turned out there was, and we introduced an entire generation, an entire group to option trading and Thinkorswim quickly became like a billion dollar company, which was crazy in the, you know, mid two thousands. And, um, uh, we eventually sold it for about three quarters of a billion to TD Ameritrade because we were public at the time, and um, and we and we had three companies bidding for us, and so after we sold it, you know, I signed. I had to work with TD for a couple of years. It was my contract. Right, I saw that. And and after two years, I went to the CEO who I, I really liked, a guy named Fred Tomzak, who was a great guy, and um, we became friends. And I said, Fred, you know that this 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 world is not my world. You know, like I'm an entrepreneur. I I love you know, I, I love working for myself. And I go, what are the chances that I'm ever going to be the CEO of TD Ameritrade? He goes, zero, Tom. Let's be honest. <laughs> he goes, maybe less than zero. So right. I go, I think, I think it's better if I move on. But I got this idea. And if you want to be partners with me, you know, as this TD wants to partner up with me, let's do it. He goes, what's your idea? I go, Tasty Trade. Now, to make a long story short, I had once presented the name Tasty Trade to Fred and he hated it. So <laughs> yeah. I wasn't too concerned that he was going to be worried about it. I go, I'm going to build a content company, financial media. I'm going to compete with CNBC, with Bloomberg. I'm going to create and I'm going to create leads and I'll send the leads to you. We'll work out a deal. And he goes, done, I'm in. And we built Tasty Trade. And, and it turned out to be a really instant success, the largest digital financial network in the world after a couple of years, um, a really big global following, 190 countries. Um, and we, didn't, we couldn't even monetize these people because we gave it away. But we would we'd monetize some people by the leads. And um, in 2016, we decided to build our own brokerage firm again, which was Tastyworks, because we wanted to control the technology, the story, and the fee schedule. And so in order to do all that, we had to own everything, the whole ecosystem. And so um, today we own the entire ecosystem, the content, the technology, actually two brokerage firms, and, um, and then a bunch of peripheral products like a, a magazine, you know, other, other aspects of the network, an advisory service, you know, a, an exchange, a, a Bitcoin company. You know, we have a bunch of different stuff. And so um, we built this ecosystem to support both our network and our brokerage firms and, and really Everything is built around our content, which is all, which is just think of it like a think tank. It's just, it's just a bunch of really smart young kids who are, you know, PhDs in physics, PhDs in data science, PhDs in finance, um, a lot of advanced degrees in math and built everything around this model of, Hey, you know what? I know you're a smart person and I know you believe what you believe in, but I'm not going to buy into your story until you show me that the math works because I need to see, I know one plus one equals two, but I want to see it. And I know to get from point A to point C, I've got to probably pass point B, but I want to see that in a math equation. And so we've built this entire, you know, we've conceptualized this. We've built the theoretical models around it. And we basically have had this mass appeal to a lot of really smart people. And, and you know, like our number one client base is, the number one profession of our client base is an engineer. Whether it's a software engineer, electrical engineer, whatever, they're mostly engineers. And, and, and this base has grown globally. You know, it's all over the world. Like, here's the thing. I love what I do. You can tell. <laughs> I have fun with it. Like, it's a really special thing in life if you can wake up in the morning and say, hey, you know what? I, I really like what I do for a living. You know, it's really hard to find that in, in, in the world. So I'm lucky. Yeah, absolutely. Now, you touched on something there that all of our listeners, you know, if they've been listening to me for a while, they're already interested in this. And if you can find a way to make money doing something you love to do, then you can also get your kids and your grandkids, some of them, maybe not all of them, but some of them to love it and work with you, which as you and I spoke of before we started the show, that's a special joy when one of our grown children and later grandchildren decide they want to work with us. But we can actually use stock trading and options trading to create a family business and teach these skill sets to the kids and grandkids and work together. And for our listeners, if we have some new folks that maybe haven't even 
opened a trading account yet, but they've been listening. So they, they're starting to get kind of uh, interested in these things. The cool thing about it is you guys have built not only the, you have a great educational, you haven't even talked about that, but the, the great byproduct and benefit to people like my listeners out there and all your guys out there, your, your group of people is the educational background because you love it so much. You're a good teacher. Not everybody can do that. Not everybody can create the, you know, the technical part, but also be a good teacher, but you've got that. And it's because you love it, but you also have a gift of teaching, which is cool, but they get that benefit of the education, but they also have the tools that have the probability math built into them. And that's not something most of us could have done. And so that's out there for our listeners. And that's what's exciting. Now, let me get you, I want to get your opinion on this because I want them to hear this from you. You know that you and I are, there are a few folks out there, but you know, at, at large, the the Wall Street world, the university, college university world, and certainly the financial advisory world, they don't necessarily want uh, average folks to learn how to do this stuff. That <laughs> They're used to doing it for you. It's a huge conflict. And I've been, I'm a huge advocate for the active investor. Exactly. I don't believe that anybody, like you go through your whole life and the people tell you, you know what, you're better off as a passive investor. There's no nothing else you will do in your entire life where people say you're better off being passive about it. Nobody hires exactly. you because they want you to be passive. Nobody <laughs> wants anybody to be passive in any aspect of life. Okay? Except this. All of a sudden, when it comes to investing, they tell you, you're supposed to be passive. So everything you've ever learned about everything else, you're supposed to throw out the window. I want people to engage in finance, to be active about finance, to not to be passive, and to learn something. You know, I believe one of the most important aspects of entrepreneurial and business success is the speed at which you are capable of making decisions and the speed at which your brain processes decision-making. And it is not something that you can necessarily just teach. It's something that you have to experience. So the more decisions that you make in life, the better you become at making those decisions. It is very difficult to move ahead in life if you have to overthink and if you're worried about every decision that you make. Exactly. The most successful entrepreneurs and the most successful business people make split seconds decisions. The best athletes in the world, you know, if you want to say, Tom Brady is the GOAT, and he's the greatest ever. He's not the greatest athlete ever. He's probably among the top three decision makers in the history of sports because he doesn't have the physical tools everybody else has, but he has the in the brain, his brain processing speed is off the charts. And when you think about that, it works the same way in business. You know, like the, the great, there's a lot of smart people out there. You know how many freaking geniuses there are in the world. But the people that rise to the top that build multi-billion dollar businesses make decisions faster than anybody else. Yeah, I think that that is one of the most important takeaways of active investing and active finance that most people completely miss. They leave it on the table. They don't understand it. Well, they've been taught all in the American system, the educational system from the ground up, we're taught to seek safety and to avoid risk. And that's the opposite of what we need to do. And we're taught to to not be decisive, but rather group think, you know, getting a group of people, have a committee, talk about it for three weeks, a month, try to make a decision. It's the opposite of what actually works in the entrepreneurial world. So decisiveness is huge. The other one, the thing that I think our folks have the biggest thing to overcome is risk taking, the, the desire and ability to learn to be a risk taker. So let me ask you this. You and I don't agree with this, but the world at large says, don't, you know, don't go learn how to trade options. It's too risky. So to talk to us a little bit about how you can manage that risk. There is risk because there's no return without risk. So how do you manage that risk? And talk to the people a little bit about how possible it actually is to manage it. Well, the first thing that I think that most people don't understand about, about listed products in general is that. When, when, when you were growing up, when I was growing up and, and we looked at the stock market, the stock market was by definition, even by using, you know, pre and just different, different values of money. The stock market was affordable. The average stock was between, let's call it 10 and $20. Right. So if you wanted to buy a hundred shares of stock, you could go out and for, you know, a thousand dollars or two thousand dollars, you could buy a hundred shares of stock and you can start to build a portfolio buying stock. 
Today, it's a whole different world. The average, the average price of a stock is in the hundreds of dollars. Yeah, 300, 400. One share of Amazon, it's $3,500. You want to buy yeah. one share you know, of Google, it's whatever, 1,500. You want to buy one share of, you know, of Tesla, it's $750. Yeah. The average price of stock. So if you want to buy 100 shares today, nobody's going to put up $350,000 to buy 100 shares of Amazon. So what are you going to buy? 10 shares for 35,000, one share for 3,500. <laughs> and then you can't even hedge those positions. So there's no strategy involved. So the first thing and the most important thing about option trading and the reason that it's the fastest growing area of finance, the, the absolute reason is because it's capital efficient. You, me, or anybody listening today, if you said, you know what, I think Amazon is, is a, a, a raging buy here at 3,500 for whatever reason you think you're going to, they're going to split the stock. The stock's never going to go down. Who cares? I don't care what you think, but you like it, but you don't want to pay $3,500 to buy it. Well, you can buy a call spread in Amazon for $250 and at the money call spread, $5 wide for $250. And all of a sudden you're trading Amazon. You know, the, you have the, you have some buying power in and some Delta equivalent in Amazon for putting up $250. That's why option trading is so cool. It's not because you can take $1 to make $10. Okay. That's the wrong way to use options. It's because options are strategic. And in the rest of finance, everything is what we call static, meaning it's black and white. So, so David, if I look at something and I say, if I look at a future, it's it, like crude oil or natural gas or something, it's black and white. If you buy it, it has to go up. If you sell, it has to go down. If you buy a stock, it has to go up. If you short a stock, it has to go down. There's no strategy involved. It's black and white. You, you, you have to guess right. In the option world, what we love about it is it's capital efficient, A, B, it's liquid, and C, it's strategic. So if you're wrong, you can possibly still make money. And sometimes if you're right, you can still lose money. So you have to know what you're doing. So, so let me stop you a second. So uh, capital efficient, what you're saying is um, you can actually afford to buy enough shares of, of something to matter if you switch to options rather than the stocks. You could, instead of paying $100,000 for 1,000 shares, you might could control 1,000 shares for $10,000. And in that sense, it's just that alone, it's a little safer. It's not riskier. You're putting less money in the market. And then the second thing that you're mentioning is you can actually, it's not either up wins and down loses or vice versa. You can actually do spreads and things where you can do what the big boys do when they're hedging, selling puts uh, against a, a stock purchase or a call purchase, things like that. And it can be put forth in an educational manner where we can actually understand how to do these things. So it becomes very powerful in the hands of an average person. I, I kid about it. I say, you know, really only your congressman is supposed to know how to do this stuff. You can, you can gain leverage. You can gain added safety and complexity in a good way where it actually works in your advantage. And you're not supposed to know this and they don't always want you to know it, but it's out there. You can, you can learn these things. There was a situation, there's, I mean, always a situation, but, but I get a lot of emails from new participants in the market. And one of the things I always say is, listen, one of the most important things about learning how to use all the financial products that are available to you is that you can create a strategic environment where you're learning just to improve basis. Like, like if I take this bottle of, I got this bottle of water here, right? If it costs a dollar for this bottle of water, let's say everybody pays a dollar for this bottle of water. If you want to buy it, it's a dollar. That, and let's say if you buy it a dollar, it's got a 50% chance of going higher, 50% chance of going lower. But if you can buy it for 80 cents, your statistical chance of success is like 67%. And so that to me is the beauty of understanding how to use all the financial products. Well, yeah, I'll give away some of my upside, if I can improve my probability of profit from buying this bottle of water. And essentially everybody that understands buying any asset, what we're not clear of is that in the world of listed finance, you can actually reduce the basis for what you're paying for that asset. Exactly. You, you know, uh, another thing too, on the educational side, as, as you guys come along and you grab the skill sets, from people like Tom, from people like Tradeway. You learn these skill sets. That's what's going to help you to make faster decisions, like Tom was talking about earlier. You you, you know what the options are out there, no pun intended, but you know what the options are, what you can and can't do, and what you have access to, and you can make quicker decisions because you understand it. Now, he and I were talking before the broadcast started 
a little bit about my background. He said, wow, you're the CEO of Tradeway and you're a pastor. You got the whole package. And, you know, that's true. I, I was a businessman running our family oil business before I became a Christian. And then three years later, I got called to preach. And then when I started studying theology, I see business principles everywhere in the Bible. And so at our Tradeway meetings, we bring these principles in. For example, God's law of supply and demand, that's in the Bible. We show people where it is. They're surprised to see that. Or God's law of risk-return trade-off, that's in the parable of the talents in many other places. And like I said a second ago, skill sets will help you be decisive. The Bible talks about that. One of the conditions for wealth creation is to gain wisdom and knowledge and understanding. The modern term for that is skill sets. And a great way to build skill sets is to go out to Tradeway.com and check out the Trader Pro membership. There's no risk at all because you can cancel your membership at any time, but it's going to take you from the beginning level all the way through to being able to do spreads and every detail of how we can use options to gain these wonderful advantages for you and for your family. So check it out, Tradeway.com, the Trader Pro membership. Now, Tom, there's something amazing out there that's on the shelf for all you guys that are listening, and it's an advantage over stock trading. So let's talk about that for a minute. Now, it has to do with the Delta. For example, if you buy a 50% Delta call option, you want the stock to go up. So if that stock goes up a dollar, that option value is going to go up 50 cents. That's what 50% Delta means. But what's really great is as the stock continues to move in your favor, the farther up it goes, the delta gets higher. So before you know it, when the stock goes up a dollar, the value of your option goes up a whole dollar. Now, on the other side of that, what if the stock went against you and goes down when you thought it would go up? What's cool about it is the immediate down move. When the stock goes down a dollar, you don't lose a dollar. You only lose 50 cents because of the 50% delta. So if you stop it out quickly, if you'd have been in the stock, you'd have lost a dollar per share. Since you're in the option, you only lose 50 cents. Tell us about that, Tom. What you're talking about, when you buy an option and it goes the direction that you want, you actually, you, you gain delta. So right. you gain theoretical directional shares. So what separates winners and losers is your ability to kind of understand mechanics, understand strategy, and also obviously, you know, you have to be right with your assumptions. There, there's, there's a, there's an old rule in options, which, and, and there's an old rule in all derivatives, which is essentially, there's two ways to play it. You can play it where you've got to beat the stock, which is buying everything, or you've got to make the stock beat you, which is selling everything. But the coolest thing about options and derivatives is you get to choose which game you want to play. Like if you went to Vegas or something and made a bet, you, most of the time, you can only bet on the side that's offered. You can't bet on both sides. It's not a two-sided market, which is what makes the market by definition unfair. On a two-sided market, you can do anything. You can put yourself in a position to risk a little, make a lot, you beat the stock. Or you can put yourself in a position to risk a lot, make a little, and the stock's got to beat you. And we don't care what side you play on. And that is the beauty. Capital efficient, strategic analytics capital efficient, strategic, probabilistic opportunity. Yeah, Tom, that's amazing because what we're talking about, instead of paying $3,100 a share, you can pay two fifty dollars and control the same number of shares. Secondly, strategic means we have a plan. And thirdly, probabilistic means we're getting the math on our side like the big boys do. That used to be something that wasn't available to the average investor, or at least they didn't know about Never, it. Never, ever, it, until we built technology starting exactly, in the early 2000s. Exactly, and that's what's amazing to me. And guys, you know, if you go out to Tradeway.com and you take a look at Trader Pro, it's going to get you the information and the education you need to learn how to gain these advantages with options trading. So check it out, Tradeway.com, the Trader Pro membership. You need the power that this will bring you. I really appreciate you being on our show. We're running out of time here today. But, you know, you, you actually are one of the heroes to the average investor in the stock market in well, America and I'll in the world it. because America is the biggest. And, and you're an icon already. And thank you so much for the hard work you've put into to create these tools and the amazing educational information that's out there. So many of our guys are going to be really thinking about this after hearing it straight from the options market wizard. And uh, 
You know, guys, if you enjoyed this episode, I sure hope you'll go out and rate and review it. We'd sure appreciate it because I want other people to hear this. I want people to find this and hear it, especially this show. And if you'll do that as a special thank you when you do it, I'm going to give you free access to our incredible Word on Investing virtual summit coming up April 22nd through 24th. And you're going to hear some great guests like Dr. Myron Golden, Tommy Thornburg. You may hear Tom on there. I believe we can get Tom to get on there with us. And it's going to be three value-packed days. I don't want you to miss it. So just rate and review the podcast. I'm going to throw that in for you, give you access to that if you'll do it. So go out there to Tradeway.com and check out the summit. Register for it. That's Tradeway.com. Tom, I cannot thank you enough. I've never personally met you until today. And I've known about you for a long, long time, and I'm so glad to finally get to meet you and get to know you a little bit. And I hope we can get together again sometime. Thank you so much. Thank you, and thanks, everybody, listening. That was an awesome talk, and so uh, anytime you like. All right. Well, guys, we'll see you next time. Thanks for tuning in.